Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome to episode one on a series that has not quite been named yet. So help me out on that. Leave a comment down below on what you think I should call it. So this year we're going to try and grow a 2,500 pound pumpkin. I've had some success in the past before. In 2016, I grew a 2106. In 2019, I grew a 2,261 pounder. So I'm hoping I can get her done and grow a 2,500 pounder this year. On this episode, I'm going to take you through looking at genetics on seeds starting seeds and getting them going. That'll be the first step in our process. Okay guys, let's go over picking out your seeds, checking on genetics. Um, so this is tools.pumpkinfanatic.com. This is where we can look up the genetics of stuff. So I've already chosen my seeds, but we'll kind of go through them. Uh, the first one on the main page here, you got the top 10 biggest pumpkins and we got a seed out of the 2593 patent. Um, this, this pumpkin was grown over in England uh, by these twin brothers, the Paytons. Um, let's take a look at it. So if we look at it here, it's uh, just like a family tree, just for anything else like cattle or whatnot. So they grew this seed off the 1875 Mendy, which was grown off the 2145 McMullen, which was grown off the 1756 Hollow Jolivet, so on and so forth. You can follow it along. Um, so since this seed was grown last year, uh, there's no progeny of it. No one's grown it yet, so we don't know what that is. Um, we could look at the 1875 Mendy. If we go to that one, and we'll look at the progeny on that, and we can see it grew the 2593 Peyton. It also grew a 2400 pound Peyton and a 2000 pound, and so on and so forth down the line. So if a uh, seed's more than a year old, you can see what it's grown. So in the case of the 2593, we don't know what it's grown. I'm going to grow it this year and we'll see what happens. So the next seed I'm going to grow, you need to do a search here and you know the weight of the seed. We're going to do a 2283 Barlow Jacobus. So the genetics on this, it's from 1971 and a half Barlow from 2145. And that was pollinated with another 2145 that's sibbed. So then this 1971 and a half was back crossed with another 2145 so it's just full of 2145 and if we look at the progenie on this one you can see there's a pumpkin that i grew the 2261 schmidt which will be my third choice so there's a picture of the 2261 schmidt so we got the 2593 the 2283 and then we'll grow the 2261 schmidt so that was grown off the 2283 Barlow Jacobus, you know, we're just another generation up. And I self that with the 2283 Barlow Jacobus, kind of solidifying that genetics. So look at the progeny on this one. And we had a 2100 pounder growing last year. Let's load the picture here. That's in kilograms there. So I had a nice big orange pumpkin. That's what we're always looking for. I had a 14, 18 months ma. This is my neighbor Tom. Another nice orange pumpkin there. So, so those are the three seeds that I'm growing. I'm actually going to grow. I'm going to have a plant of a backup planted of a 2200 wolf. So let's take a look at that one once. I actually don't know the genetics on this one that well. I just picked it out. So we got a 1885 Werner which is grown from the 1501 Vanderweelen, which if you saw on the front page, the 1501 Vanderweelen grew a 2350 um, in Minnesota last year. So that's got a lot of potential. That was crossed with a 2112 Skinner. So let's see what, let's see what this 1885 Werner's grown. So it grew the 2200 Wolf, a 1500 Wolf, so it hasn't grown a ton of pumpkins. Um, it grew Andy's biggest here. So I think that'll be a good solid backup for us. And it's a little bit different than what other people are planting. So if we do, if it does make the cut, I think it'll be a pretty good one. So that's just kind of how you use this site and uh, figure that portion out. All right, so another tool on figuring out what seeds. If you go to bigpumpkins.com, go to Wayoffs, go to GPC results and information. This is going to have the way offs for quite a few years back, more than enough to look back on. So, so the results for 2020, if we just go on the pumpkins, which is what we're concerned about, 
it's going to give us a list of every pumpkin that was grown last year, where it was weighed, what percent heavy to chart. So here we can see the, the biggest pumpkin last year was that one from the Paytons. Um, it was 502 OTT, 7% heavy to the chart. Um, it's got the seeds listed here. So if you start looking through here and see stuff that looks uh, like it's repeating, you know, and you want to look on the other genetic website and kind of narrow that down. So this will start giving you a good starting point. So a lot of 2,000 pounders growing last year. So I got 23 plus these were exhibition not counted. So that was 24, 25. 25 2,000 pound pumpkins last year so that's pretty amazing um, so yeah you can go through here go back years just kind of see what's been growing some big ones um, you'll see some reoccurring things but in my honest opinion even top 50 top 75 all these seeds they all have the potential to to grow 2,000 pounds so we just got to make it happen get a little Get a little weather, get a little luck, do a good job, and a guy can do it. All right, we're going to start seeds today, so let's mix up some potting soil. Uh, I never seem to do the same thing every year, but one thing I wanted to point out to you guys is all these are different. So if you look at like a seed starting mix, look at the nutrient levels on this. 0 0 0.06, 0 0.03, 0 0.03, and this is... I don't think they're just calling it an organic mix, but this is 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.10. So like three, up to three to seven times stronger, depending on the nutrient. And then let's go over to here. This is a container mix, one, 1 1.28. Now compare that to 0 0.03 on this, 3.2, 0.33. So this is three to 16 times stronger than this one, and this one's stronger than this one. If you were to straight start your seeds in this, you would probably burn your seedlings and the leaves would all curl on it. A lot of people think it's their grow lights too strong or grow lights too close. It might actually be because you have too much nutrients. Something like this, if you start your seeds in this, it won't take too long. They'll run out of nutrients before they even get to the garden. And even this I would question because the only fertilizer in here is kelp meal. And that's really not going to be available to the plant unless bacteria are breaking it down. So I think we're going to do a blend of this one. And this one, I think we'll go two thirds and one third uh, because these nutrients should be available. They're all synthetic fertilizers in here. And then hopefully that's not too hot. Hopefully it works out good. And we'll see what happens. All right, I got the soil measured out. I'm gonna just add some water here in my kitchen sink and really work in the water real good with, uh, with my hands, stir it all around. And then I'll cut back to you guys and show you what the proper moisture is. All right, we got the soil mixed up, got some water in there. I'll show you the test. You just grab a little bit of soil here, squeeze it nice and hard. You should get about a drop of water out of there. See that? You know, it's good. It should make kind of a clump, but it should just break apart nice and easy. That'll be the perfect moisture what we're looking for. Funny thing happened when I came out here to do this. All of a sudden, there's a woodchuck come out of the barn, and he's sitting there looking at me. And if you haven't grown giant pumpkins before, you know they can be pretty detrimental. They can just rip your patch apart and eat all your plants and some guys have had some pretty bad destruction from them let's just say he's not around here anymore all right guys it's april 12th and it's seed starting day so first thing i do is i make up uh, some water to soak them in and it's a little bit of humic and a little bit of kelp just a little pinch a little half pinch that helps activate the seeds gives them Gives them a little extra juice to get going. Uh, so I only ever take one seed out of the package at a time. The Barlow I have done. And just like this one I'm getting ready to do. I write the name of the seed on the seed. And then it goes in the cup. And then I put a paper towel on there because the seeds do float. And then that helps keep the other side moist. I'll soak them for six hours. Um, so then I'll just go down the line and do each of them at a time. Just so I don't mix anything up because we want to know the genetics on everything. And then after they soak for six hours we'll get them in the pots that we prepared. So I always start double the amount of seeds of the plants I'm going to grow. So my choice to grow out there is a 2283, the 2261, and the 2593 Patton. And then I'm going to have the 2200 Wolf as a backup. But you see on my 2261, I'm planting three seeds. And the reason that is, is I want to pick a really good one of my own to grow. You know, and I got extra ones. 
And if for some reason I had uh, the 2283 or 2593 didn't go, I guess I'll grow a couple of them. So we're going to start six seeds and we'll see what they look like once we get them under the grow light and see what pops up. All right, guys, the seeds are done soaking. They've been soaking for six hours. Now we're just going to place them in the pot. Uh, I dig a little hole about mm, half inch to an inch down. Just cover it up there. And then we're going to put our saran wrap back over top to keep the moisture good. Um, I have a stick labeled. I won't be able to stick up because it'll hit the, the roof, but I'll keep that in there. And then each pot is labeled with the seed just so we keep everything straight. So I'll do that for the rest of them, and they'll chill out in here for a while. All right, they're all planted. The temperature's set at 85 degrees on there. These guys will just chill out in here for a while. I'll probably start checking them in 48 hours every 12 hours. So they're just going to hang out in here like Joe Biden running a campaign for president in his basement. All right, see you guys later. So what'd you guys think? Do you start your seeds different? Do you use a wet paper towel method? Do you use a different seed starting mix? Let me know how you do it down below. Hey, thanks for watching. Good luck in your patch and we'll catch you next time.